I have reached another milestone birthday this year. That means it is time to have a colonoscopy, the dreaded test that nobody wants to have. It is necessary, but not pleasant. I'm gonna talk about what I'm doing to prepare for my colonoscopy on aging joyfully. <laughs> Okay, first thing I'm going to say is it took me over two months just to schedule this test. They require you to have your prior colonoscopy before scheduling it. Well, when I had my test 10 years ago, I don't even remember getting any paperwork. I could have, but you are under anesthesia for one. And for number two, I remember having some complications. I remember being doubled over in pain and I wanted to just go home and they didn't want me to leave. They knew it was a sign of a problem. I did not, and I just wanted to leave. So I don't know if we ever received the paperwork or if Steve got it and it got tossed aside, but I could not find my colonoscopy from 10 years ago. And because we moved, because we had moved, I was using a different facility. So I contacted the facility and uh, that was challenging because they kept saying their box was full. Like, like when you have a friend whose box is full, do you think a professional organization should have a, bo a box full? I could not even get through most of the times. But at one point I did get through and they assured me that they were going to fax my results to the new colonoscopy, the new gastroenterologist. Well, they kept telling me they didn't get it and wouldn't schedule it until they got it. Then Steve came up with the brilliant idea of contacting our internist who I was using at the time. He said they would have the results. So I did and she assured me that she had faxed it. And again, they said they did not get it. I called her again and she faxed it a second time. And again, they said they did not get it. I said, can you go to the fax machine and make sure? She said, we have no access to the fax machine. Well, I don't know where this fax machine is. So then I had to drive to my old internist, pick up a hard copy of the results, drive to the new gastroenterologist doctor and hand them the results. I felt like we were back in 1950. I'm like, with all this technology, I have to drive all over Atlanta traffic. Getting this, are you ridiculous? Is this, is this ridiculous? Is this crazy? Oh my gosh, so she scheduled it right that day, but I did find out a good thing I picked it up because I did not remember the exact date of my colonoscopy from 10 years ago. Turns out it was May 30th and you have to have it past 10 years or you will be billed. She said insurance companies are purposely doing this, this trickery, this difficulty in getting it. So you are purposely billed for your colonoscopy. That is a routine, no problem colonoscopy. I can't think of a sadder thing that they are preventing people from getting Routine testing for preventable illnesses. I'm personally disgusted as well as Steve. You let me know, comment below. Do you think this is appalling how difficult it is? And even though it's routine, I had to pay $60 for the prep kit. Now, how is that okay? How is that okay? The, the test is included in your insurance, but the prep isn't? The prep you need to do the test is not included? Tell me how that makes sense. I have no idea. Okay, so I asked for pills this time. I've never had pills because that liquid to me tastes weird and you have to chill it. And I remember it always making me really cold and having chills and I didn't want to do that. I like my water today, room temperature, which is, I don't know if that's an aging thing, but when I was in Chicago, my older brother, he only drinks at room temperature. He said, it's easier on your body. It's less stress on your body. And I do remember my father, no longer using ice. He never had ice in his home because he didn't use it. And I thought maybe this is an aging thing where you like things room temperature. My brother-in-law also likes things room temperature and he's in his seventies. So I don't, I don't know if that's an aging thing, but I do know 10 years ago when I was 50, I froze doing that colonoscopy because that cold liquid would get, and you had to drink so much. It would just give me these uncontrollable chills and shakes. And I didn't want to go through that again. So I had them prescribe these pills. You open up this kit and inside here is a cup. It is a 16 ounce cup that you are still going to drink a lot of fluids, a lot of water. And I like water so I can handle it. And when it's room temperature, two bottles of pills, I believe. 
Each bottle contains 12 pills. You are to swallow those pills and follow whatever the directions are. I don't have them memorized because I'm not looking forward to this test at all. You have to start six o'clock at night, the night before, and then get up at three in the morning to do the second bottle of pills. Take the second bottle along with all those fluids. You have to quit by 5 a.m. for a test at 8 a.m. 8 a.m. So I went to the grocery store twice. Here's my first trip. I went only a couple days ago and I got bananas and they're already turning brown. So I went again today, a couple days before the test and got more bananas. But the first trip, um, you, there's, it says I only got restrictions three days before. I'm not eating nuts and oats, things like that. And nuts are my favorite food. Since I've changed my diet and lost 45 pounds, nuts are my snacks. So for me, that's gonna be tough to not eat the nuts anymore. So three days before, you can't eat a lot of these foods. The fruits, um, so the foods you can eat are all the things I gave up. So I had to buy these things again. The breads, I love that white bread. So I bought one loaf at Walmart and another one at Publix. I love that bread. So that shouldn't be any torture for me to eat that bread. Bought waffles. Um, you can eat some meats as long as they're well cooked. No reds, no purples. If you're doing this test, don't listen to me. Follow your instructions. I just know red and purple are totally out. And I looked for popsicles today at Publix, and I couldn't find any popsicles that did not have red and purple. I didn't want to get a whole box. I'm going to be stuck with all those red and purples. I just wanted to get some lime popsicles, and they all had either some creamy stuff inside or uh, fruit inside or they had a mixture box of red purple and, and yellow and I didn't want to be stuck with a box of popsicles I bought this apple juice and could not believe the amount of sugar in it so I'm gonna water that down I would never these are foods I would never eat I have ginger ale at home that I keep for when I'm sick although I don't know why I always had in my head to drink ginger ale when water is just as good when you're sick you just want lots of fluids so that last day, that one day before is all fluids. That includes coffee, no cream. Coffee, apple juice, ginger ale, water. It's just an all liquid diet that last day, no food at all. So I also bought these beautiful flowers for myself because I don't want to go through this. That was some encouragement to give to myself. The lady at the cash register kept going on and on about what a great gift it is for me to be buying these flowers for somebody. I didn't want to tell her I was buying them for myself. She said she buys them all the time for people because they're so affordable. They're only $12. And I thought this vase would come in handy with the present that I'm giving Steve for our anniversary. I'm giving him some Lego type flowers for us to create together. And, and this may be too small because there's quite a few. But the, the flower kit I bought for the imitation Legos was, is um, purples, a lot of purples, and this has a lot of purples here. So as we make them, I thought this was a good temporary vase until we finish the whole kit and move them into a larger vase. I like that. And so anyway, I bought these as inspiration as I'm doing my prep, and um, this is going to be a night of mm, not fun because in addition to drinking that, you're going to be going to the bathroom. I don't think you'll be getting any sleep at all that whole night. Thankfully, it's first thing in the morning and I can come home and go back to sleep. So I'll talk to you during the, the prep as I'm getting ready to start drinking that, all that water. But I'm not going to show any disgusting stuff. Um, if you've had it, you know everybody says the prep is the absolute worst. The test itself is very, very quick. I don't know how long. You're in and out within three hours, which a lot of that is just paperwork and setting you up. And then just waking you up and discharging you. Now, um... I I feel like going to the doctor, I, they're always checking for cancer. Breast cancer, colon cancer, skin cancer. I'm always being checked for cancer. Thankfully, I am very healthy. I only have one chronic condition, which is sleep apnea, which is major in itself. But by losing 45 to 50 pounds, I got my sleep apnea down to the mile, almost normal category. But I believe that... It's something in my throat that I was born with and I'm never going to be totally normal. I believe I've had it my whole life just based on my sleeping habits as a young child. And as you get older, your muscles relax more. And if you drink alcohol or take any sedatives or anti-anxiety pills, that relaxes it more, making your sleep apnea worse along with weight gain, which I had. 
But anyway, the point of this is Steve has it too. And when he had his colonoscopy three years ago, he had to come in for an extra appointment to discuss his sleep apnea. Today they said that's not required. And I thought that is odd. Maybe because they know everybody either has it or has it undiagnosed. Many, many people are walking around today with undiagnosed as our obesity rate is going up to, heading up towards 50%, one in two. And like I said, you gain weight when you have sleep apnea. I believe that I had it and then gained weight and plus, plus with a poor diet, gained more weight. Once I lost weight, I mean, I still have sleep apnea. And if you have enlarged tonsils, which I don't, that contributes. So I did not require a second appointment. I mean, I don't know what they would do other than knowing that you have it. It's noted in my records. She had the wrong allergy listed. I don't know why. I had three different pages, or not pages, but three different forms online of paperwork. They asked the same question like three times. Do you have high blood pressure? Do you have high blood pressure? Did you ever have high blood pressure? Does anybody in your family have high blood pressure? The way it was written was so confusing. She said I had checked off the, the wrong allergy thing, and I was like, hmm, okay. But thankfully, she wrote down the right one, and... Um, all should be good. I mean, there's, of course, risks and everything, but everything should be good. And um, I don't expect them finding anything. I don't have any problems. I don't expect But I have been surprised many times in my life. I think it's very common after 60 to have polyps. They don't cover polyps if they have to remove them, and then they have to do a biopsy. Te or, I don't know. I guess it's called a biopsy. They test for cancer. They don't cover that in a routine colonoscopy, and that's where people get upset because it gets quite costly to do that. But... At the at the uh, the most I would anticipate is polyps. I don't anticipate any other issue, so we will see. And hopefully, I'm all good and healthy. If they find something, you have to go back in five years. If they don't, you're good for ten years. Nothing was found ten years ago, and I don't anticipate them finding anything this time. But like I said, you're always surprised in life, and as you age, there's more and more. It's safe to do this preventative testing, although you don't like it. It's not enjoyable can get a little costly. It's very important because if you don't, you could let uh, colon cancer go to stage four and, you know, it's not good. Steve's father passed away from colon cancer and back then, I don't even know if they had colonoscopies. I don't think they even had treatment for colon cancer. I don't know what year colonoscopies started. Don't really know. So stay tuned for the rest of this video as I take you through taking my pills and water and maybe I'll check in as I'm having some of my bland diet the three days before. My, all my whites, my white breads, <laughs> my white waffles. I mean, you, you, can have, you can have cheese pizza. So we might be having cheese pizza on the Friday before because we schedule the test for a Monday morning. So stay with me and see how it goes. It's the third day of my prep for my colonoscopy. That means it's one day before the procedure. The days three, days three and day two before, I could not eat nuts, seeds, a list of things like that. Fruits with seeds, if you're having one done, please do not listen to me, but consult your information from your own doctor. I looked online to see if there's any more directions online, and there's quite a few more foods listed on the internet that my doctor did not say I couldn't eat, such as grapes, or tomatoes, things with skin, things that might affect the instruments, um, no skin on your potatoes. I, I think I showed you earlier in a video the groceries I got first at Walmart. I got some bananas and they turned brown kind of soon. So I went back to Publix and got more bananas. I ate mostly white foods. All the foods I gave up during our, our diet, the foods I gave up when we changed our diet where we lost significant weight. So I was eating those carbs again and the thing about them is I am starving. I am so hungry right now. So now I see why uh, when I was on that heavy carb diet, you just eat all the time because it's not filling you up. Now my mistake is that you can't eat meat in the days three and two beforehand and I ate a hamburger last night without bread and it didn't really fill me up. So I woke up in the middle of the night starving and today's all liquids, just liquids. I've been drinking coffee. I bought some apple juice, but it is so incredibly sweet. I put one fifth uh, apple juice and four fifths water and it was still too sweet for me. I could not believe how sweet it is. I've also been drinking ginger ale, which is also sweet. So I haven't had a lot today because it is all liquids. I made some jello, but it hasn't gotten... Um, it didn't firm up yet, so I'm waiting for that to firm up. I made some pineapple jello, no reds, no purples. Um, I keep reminding myself not to eat because I am so hungry and I keep <laughs> I'm so tempted to eat. But I want to do this one time. I don't want them to say you didn't clean out enough. I'm going to start taking pills at um, 6 o'clock tonight.
and you drink just a little bit less with the pills you only drink six glasses of water instead of the whole um, six glasses twice so that's a little bit less than a gallon but in between the first prep the first set of pills you can continue on your liquid diet until the second set of pills which are two o'clock in the morning and then you don't drink anything um, after five that's my that those are my directions yours may be different i'm just sharing my experience here and um i'm hoping everybody's getting their colonoscopy done maine has the highest rates of people doing them at close to 80 percent while california has one of the lowest at about 58 percent it's kind of sad that people don't do this because steve's father did pass away from colon cancer and we've known several other people who have passed away from colon cancer it's a um, kind of a hidden disease until you start getting pains and then it's probably pretty far along so it's a not fun test the prep is the worst once i mean after i wake up in the morning which of course i'm not going to sleep at all tonight after two o'clock i won't be sleeping at all because we have to leave so early but once um we head to the to the doctor's office the majority of the work is done it's um it's this it's early evening and all night that's going to be most of the work and then i'm looking forward to it being done and i don't anticipate any polyps but i did read that most polyps are found after 50 and older and um, three people out of 10 in my family did have polyps and the rest of them haven't had a colonoscopy so my odds for polyps seem to be pretty high so i won't be surprised if i had one or two then they biopsy those to see if you have cancer and i don't anticipate anything i haven't had any problems but i hope everybody's taking care of themselves getting their colonoscopy it was reduced to 45 because so many young people are getting colon cancer and they're getting it at an advanced stage so it is very important with a sad standard american diet which is sad not healthy processed foods less fruits and vegetables less exercise we are more likely to get colon cancer take care of yourself i may show you uh, as i do take some pills tonight but i'm gonna be tired in the middle of the night so we will see but maybe in the morning steve can record me after i after he picks me up and i'm coming out of it see how out of it i seem by if i have if i am alert at all after this procedure I just got back from my colonoscopy and it did go a little bit differently than I expected. I was very concerned because the prep kit didn't seem to do what it should have done. And I was afraid that they were going to make me come back or um, that he wouldn't get a good view. I followed the directions to a T and it was the pills this time, the first time I took the pills. And it does require less water than the jug. I believe from my memory, when you do the liquid one, you drink a whole gallon. And this time it was um, four glasses less than a gallon. A gallon is 128 ounces. One glass is eight ounces. So it was 32 ounces less. So it was like, what is that, 98 ounces you drink? Which concerned me. I guess I should have gone ahead and drank that extra uh, two glasses, it's, it was uh, two separate preps, two different bottles of pills, one at six o'clock at night before, the second one at two in the morning. I, I should have gone ahead, and, you know, my gut told me to go ahead and drink another bottle of water, but I was so bloated by then when I drank the three bottles because you have to drink it in roughly, I think, 20 minutes. I just didn't feel like it. But on the last page of my instructions after when I was doing the, the the page you don't look at because you don't think there's anything on the back, it did say something about there's a slow prep for people with problems. And I was like, well, why didn't they ask me? They didn't ask me any history or anything. Why didn't they ask me if I had issues? Why didn't they tell me what that prep is? And I told the woman that because when she was um, going over all my surgery, she asked every surgery, and then she asked um, if I have IBS. And I and it took me back because I don't think of myself as having IBS since I've changed my diet and everything. I don't have a problem. And I said, yeah, in the past I've had IBS. But um, with my change in diet for this prep, I had an issue because now I wasn't on my healthy diet. I went to to lose that 45 pounds. So the prep is low fiber. So that causes a problem in in the prep <laughs> so i said why didn't they ask me that since it's in my records i totally forgot you're bringing it up why didn't they ask me when i signed up for this colonoscopy and ask me if i need that 
longer prep for people who might have an issue. And of course, she didn't answer that. But she was telling me I might have to come back. I might have to reschedule. He may start looking at me and have a problem. Um, he may say I need to come back in two years because he didn't get a thorough view. And I'm thinking none of these options are good. But I want him to try to look because that prep was a nightmare and I didn't want to do it again. So now he wasn't at all concerned. This is probably a common thing. I don't know. He seemed to have a good view because he found I have two polyps, which I wouldn't say. Actually, I was anticipating having two polyps <laughs> I, because I didn't have any issue, but uh, I, have, I have two family members who had two polyps in their 60s. And when I researched it, I saw it's very common to have polyps in your 60s. And if you have a family member, your chances are greatly increased. So I was pretty sure I was going to have two polyps. I was so sure that when I came to, the nurse told me, she said, the doctor found one polyp. And I said, really? Only one? That's odd. I was so convinced I was going to have two. And then when the doctor came in, he said, okay, you have two polyps. And I laughed and I was like, yeah, I knew it was two. What's the nurse telling me there's one? I mean, how, who has one polyp? If you have one, you're going to probably have another. But anyway, um, they do biopsy them, and I don't expect them to ha be cancerous because, I mean, he told me they were very small, the location of them, the size of them, that he did not expect cancer. And, of course, there's always surprises, but, I mean, we don't have anybody who's had colon cancer in our family. To get rid of these polyps at the stage that I got rid of mine, you are greatly you have a greatly reduced risk of getting colon cancer that's why it's so important to get these colonoscopies out of my eight siblings only three of us have had the colonoscopy and all three of us have had polyps and with that with that record if i were one of those other five i'd be scheduled on colonoscopy it doesn't sound like good odds does it when i know it's not fun to deal with but wouldn't you rather do this for one one weekend versus dealing with colon cancer. I mean, Steve went through watching his father. The pain he was in, you know, Steve was a young young man. He was 14 or 15 when his father got diagnosed, but they were driving down to Disney, and his father was in such severe pain. They were going to the grand opening of Disney in Florida. Can you believe that? I mean, his father was very tight with money, and, and they were going to the grand opening, and they didn't make it. His father was in such extreme pain they went home where he found out he had colon cancer and died within a year. Back then, I don't yes. think I don't think there were cancer treatments like there are today. I don't think he had a chance. He was only 57, and that left an a impact on Steve. And um, I've always taken this seriously because I've always had stomach issues before changing my diet. In the last few years, I've always had stomach issues, but now with a much healthier diet. And that is, that is the sad standard American diet. The standard American diet is sad and a lot of people have these stomach issues and as I said earlier now the, the guidelines for colonoscopies is 45 because so many young people are getting it. So many young people are getting colon cancer and it's much more advanced. Very sad. So anyway when I came to um, I thought I was alert pretty quickly but Steve told me I was awake for 30 minutes which isn't possible because they started the procedure at 8 15 and when I saw him it was like 9 05 and it's 20 minutes well I guess it could have been 30 minutes right you do that math I don't know I had a bottle of water sitting near me and I said here Steve here's your water and he said that's your water and I said that's not my water he said I was drinking water when he came in I have no memory of drinking that water but uh, I do remember he came in, helped me get dressed, and as soon as I was dressed, they wheeled me out. They were like kicking me out like they needed that room, kind of like at a restaurant. I was surprised at how abruptly they kicked me out. I mean, I even asked her, I said, did it take me a while to wake up? Because I had told them I take a while to wake up with anesthesia. And she said, no, you woke up right away. So, so <laughs> she said to me a couple of things, one about not drinking today, and I don't remember exactly what she said because I, I don't drink, so I wasn't listening. But, but the thing that I do remember the most is she said, any legal documents you sign today will be invalid because you've been under anesthesia. And I remember thinking, what an odd thing. You, you think I'm going to sell my house when I leave here? Or you think I'm going to go get divorced? What, what do you mean? <laughs> Change my will? What do you think I'm doing after I leave here? I'm going to sleep. I did not sleep at all. That alone should make your signature be invalid for the little bit of sleep I got last night. I started that prep at 6 o'clock and... Um, 
it didn't do anything until 11. It took five hours to do anything, which I was getting worried. I was like, is this going to work? From my memory from before, it worked a lot faster than five hours, but this was the pills. So I, and, and it told you to drink less water, which now I see I, I regret that. So it did very little at 11. And then I tried to sleep from 11.30 to 2 when I had to get up for the second dosage. Um, but of course I couldn't sleep very well. I was sleeping on the couch because I didn't want to use my CPAP because I didn't want to be getting up and down, taking that mask off. If you have sleep apnea, I don't know what other people do, but you're up and down all night. Well, okay. Then I got up about two, started the second prep and our smoke detector started going off. And I'm like, are you serious? Are you serious? Really? Smoked it. And I couldn't figure out which one it was because it was so distant. And I finally went upstairs and I heard them saying, I thought it was actually somebody breaking in. And it said, fire, fire, fire. And what well, would go off, stop, and then go off. And I figured it was the extra smoke detector we put in our attic to be diligent because we heard of a lot of fires in the attic. And I remember thinking years ago in, um, in one of our houses, our smoke detector was going off because of dust in the attic. The fact it kept stopping, I said, it must be dust in the attic. And I ignored it, but it kept going off. I mean, I couldn't climb up those attic steps and get that out of there and shut it down. But ironically, all day today, since I've been home, it has not gone off once. But in the middle of the night, it would not stop going off. So I don't know. Does the cool air, the night air, make the dust circulate? This has to be something that now that it's hotter in the house, it's not going off. But last night, it wouldn't stop going off. And of course, Steve didn't hear it. He slept through the whole thing. So in between the prep and the smoke detector, I got maybe four to five, maybe five maximum hours of sleep. So I was just exhausted. So I thought that alone should say you should not be signing any legal paperwork, should not begin divorce, getting married, <laughs> changing that will after a colonoscopy. So we were where we were first, the first room I was put in to get dressed was just those curtains that they close around you. And the guy next to me, you know, I could hear everything. His birthday was 70. So he was 54, first colonoscopy. He waited four years. And they said surgeries, they said none. I'm thinking, oh my God, you're so lucky. I had to list all my surgeries again. I'm thinking, are you kidding me? Why do I have to keep telling you every surgery? As you get older, it gets harder and harder to remember those surgeries. I mean, one doctor actually wanted me to list the surgeons. And I was like, M I don't know any of my surgeons. They were life-saving. They weren't somebody I've been going to on a continuous basis. A couple of them, you know, I was very sick. and needed them instantly and... um yeah, I don't remember my surgeon. They didn't even tell me my surgeon, I don't believe. You know, they, they didn't tell me the name of my surgeon. How am I going to tell you now, 20 years later, who my surgeon was when I was dying? No idea. So he's listing no surgeries. And then he said, well, now that I'm having this colonoscopy and they asked me if I've had surgeries, do I now tell them I've had a colonoscopy so I've had a surgery? And at first I thought, really? You think this is a surgery? And then I thought, oh, come on, Sue, there's so many things you don't know. This guy's obviously very healthy, never goes to the doctor. He's finally doing a colonoscopy four years later. And she said, no, this is a procedure, not a surgery. I mean, I was thinking he probably had problems, the fact that he's doing the colonoscopy four years after he was supposed to be doing it. But he did have sleep apnea, too. He first complained about the gown not being big enough, which I thought was ironic when I complained about it being too small. She told me they didn't have any small gowns, and... It's funny, I don't see myself as being small. For most of my adult life, I wore a size large. And now that I've lost 45 pounds, I'm wearing smalls, even though I weigh more than I weighed as a young adult. Never wore a small in my life. I don't see myself as wearing smalls. I think they changed the sizing. I thought it was ironic that he was complaining that the gown was too small. Well, I had just complained that the gown was too big. <laughs> So anyway, it's over and done with, and I thought, okay, so I had to watch what I ate for the weekend. The last day, I actually woke up a couple nights starving, where my stomach was growling. It was growling nonstop all night last night. Wouldn't stop growling, and I thought to myself, this is what people go through every day in parts of the country where they don't have food. Maybe I need to do this on a monthly basis just to cleanse my body and appreciate what it's like for all the people who don't have food. Just because I had to suffer for one weekend, I thought, what a selfish attitude. Because I had to suffer for one weekend, I thought about not doing a colonoscopy. No, you need to do it. You're going to be suffering a whole lot more if you don't do it, and they do find cancer. It's not a fun cancer, and it is the third cancer that people die from. The first death 
the number one death in America is heart disease. Number two is cancer, but within cancers, colon cancer is the third. And I didn't look up the other ones. I would say breast cancer and um, I don't know, maybe prostate. I don't really know. I'll have to look that up. So it's serious, especially with this, this diet that we all have, our lack of exercise, sitting around, being on the computer, drinking, um, alcohol as I did that. Alcohol, I did that video on why I don't drink and said how alcohol is a carcinogen that causes cancer. So please take care of yourselves. Suffer for one weekend to know that you're not going to suffer for a lot longer if you were to get colon cancer. Hopefully Steve will be here in the next video because this was my story about my getting a colonoscopy. He'll be getting one in two years. <laughs> he got his three years ago. Now I'm on the five-year track. He's on the five-year track. I think when you hit 60, I think everybody's on the five-year track for colonoscopies. So check out our other videos. If you don't like health issues, we have our vacations. So many, so many clips from Chicago. We also have many Civil War vacations. And last, last summer and fall, we went on a lot of Civil War trips. If you're a Civil War buff, check out some of those. I'll put some of those in the description. And then we also have our flowers, a new hobby we started, our Zen garden, along with our puppy that we're getting within the next month. We'll have an adorable little puppy, Sammy. So check out our videos when Sammy comes along. And until I see you again, take it easy. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's different, yes, it's different but necessary because colonoscopies are now started at 45, whereas they were 50 when I started, people my age. They are now 45 from our terrible diet in America, which is called SAD. The standard American diet is SAD. And many people are getting colon cancer at younger and younger ages with no signs. And when they're found that they have it, it's advanced. I know I did a long-term sub for a, like a 28-year-old woman who had advanced colon cancer. I don't know whatever happened to her. She never did come back. They found somebody else. Who, I don't know. It was special ed. They combined her kids to the other classes. They did something, and um, I was no longer needed. So I don't know what happened to her, but I remember thinking how sad to be in your 20s and have colon cancer. So if you are 45 or older, please, please get your tests. Out of our eight siblings, I only know of three of us getting it. And that's not cool. That's not cool at all. There is another test that you can do. Your doctor can give you, I don't know what it's called. Will you um, send in a stool sample, which I have been given that through the years and Steve too, and that always came back negative. I don't know how good that is in compared to a colonoscopy. I don't know how reliable. I, I heard there's a lot of false positives, but I don't know that it's a replacement for a colonoscopy. So please take it seriously and get your colonoscopy. It's been two weeks since I had my colonoscopy and I didn't hear anything. So they had told me I'd hear within one and a half to two weeks to get the results of my polyps that were removed. Now, I'm not really sure if I had one or two. The nurse who told me after I woke up told me I had one. The doctor told me I had two. I called to get the result of the biopsy and I had to leave a message and a nurse called me back. She told me I had one polyp and I said, no, I had two. And she said, no, you had one. That I must have misunderstood the doctor. And she said they were precancerous. It was, it was precancerous. So I asked her to get that in writing just to see what the report would say. So when I got the, um, the report in the mail, it said you had one or more polyps. So I don't know if I had one or two. I went back to the original report I got the day of the colonoscopy, and it had two polyps circled. But I don't know if it was the same polyp from a different view. They're, they're both two millimeters, and in that report, it said in the same paragraph, one and two within the same paragraph. It said one surgery for polyps. So I don't, I'm totally confused. I don't know if it matters. I know I have to go back in five years, but I wish that I could know for sure if I had one or two. To me, it's important. But the most important thing for you is to make sure you get your colonoscopy 45 and up. It's very serious, especially for younger people. They're finding more advanced colon cancer at younger ages. They're finding later stages of colon cancer at, at younger ages. So please, it's not a fun test, but it's a necessary test, especially if you're a parent. You're a parent, I'm sure you're a, a son, daughter, brother, sister, grandchild. Your family wants you around. Please get that colonoscopy. Take care of yourself. And until I see you again, Take it easy.